Hey guys, Ron here, and oh boy is this a meaty video, because you Pokemon fans can't agree on many things. As a result, there are a ton of controversial Pokemon, and I'm going to count down the most controversial Pokemon designs from each generation. Keep in mind, controversial doesn't mean unpopular. In fact, kind of the opposite? It means that people are split on their opinion of these Pokemon designs. Pokemon like Terrakion have tons of fans, but tons of haters. That's the kind of Pokemon we're looking at today. I won't include Pokemon that are controversial out outside of the fanbase. I'll try to steer away from Pokemon that most people are neutral on, like for example most people have no extreme opinions on Staravia or Makuhita. I I'm looking for Pokemon that split the fanbase. Most of this video is not my opinion. I like pretty much most of these Pokemon. And to be fair, Pokemon fans like Pokemon too. It's no secret. So naturally most of these Pokemon are beloved, but have a sizable group of players who dislike them a bunch. Before we begin, make sure to follow me on Twitter, where I actually made tons of polls to try to assess people's general opinion on these Pokemon. Now let's see these results. Let's start with, say it with me, Kanto. Of course, after more than 25 years, a few Generation 1 Pokemon have become dated or were already controversial when they were first discovered. Number 10. Moltres. Far from the worst Pokemon in Generation 1, but definitely the least popular legendary Pokemon in Kanto. This dichotomy of both being part of a, a popular group, but also showcasing the least impressive design of its trio, makes Moltres' reception somewhat split. To some, it looks like a rubber chicken on fire, while to others, it's still a powerful phoenix. Number 9. Charizard by far the most popular Pokemon in this entire video, but with such fame comes a lot of people who think this Pokemon is overrated, especially with a relatively generic draconic design, while a bunch of fans who take it to the extreme and resent Charizard's exposure to the point of hatred. Most fans definitely still enjoy Charizard's presence, but even its most loyal fans want to see Game Freak's favorite child a bit less often. Number 8. Golem as a child, I always thought Golem was a cool rock dude, but over the past decade, I found out tons of fans prefer Graveler. They don't understand how the almost reptilian Golem even evolved from its previous stage, and think Golem is simply a flawed and unsuccessful Pokemon design. Number 7. Machoke I mean, a lot of fans can agree this guy is cool. Its head's pretty creative, but there are a large number of fans who find this Pokemon a bit too uncanny. After all, Machoke, debatably, has the most humanoid body in all of Pokemon. It looks like it's wearing clothes and wears a belt that seemingly comes out of nowhere. Some Pokemon carry objects, but they're usually natural or available items, and some Pokemon look like they're wearing accessories, but those are usually just part of their biology. Machoke's whole deal is way vaguer. Number 6. Muck it's not unprecedented. We've had sludge monsters in many forms of media, but the fact that it's literally just a bigger version of Grimer and has no notable features makes this pile of muck very unpleasant. A lot of fans still see it as intimidating, which makes it appropriate in battle, but far from a Pokemon any trainer would want to go on a journey with. Number 5. Magmar it's a fantastical fire creature with some cool origins. It's nothing too crazy in the Pokemon world. It's not unpopular, but Magmar's butthead and very inconsistent body features makes this guy look like a mess. Many fans simply don't know what to think about Magmar, so they default to love or hate. Number 4. Hitmonchan while not as muscular and detailed as the humanoid Machoke, Hitmonchan has always seemed to be an example of Pokemon that wears too much clothes and accessories. It's still a Pokemon I'd want on my team, it's not off-putting, but rather extremely confusing, especially as a counterpart to Hitmonlee, who looks completely naked, as all Pokemon should be. Hitmonchan, however, is one nose and hairline away from being a straight-up human. Number 3. Execute. While off the bat not the most interesting Pokemon, so some may think it's cute, while others think it's incredibly lazy. But fans have also been split on whether or not they are actual eggs or seeds. The game literally verifies that they are scientifically closer to seeds, but colloquially refer to them as eggs, so fans can't decide if this Pokemon design is clever or not. Number 2. Tangela one of the most mysterious Pokemon out there. What does its body look like? Well, honestly, that's the majority of the mystery, but some fans find this unexplained creature to be somewhat uninspired and sloppy, while others don't care and think it's relatively cute and endearing. Before revealing the most controversial Generation 1 Pokemon, here are a few that didn't make the list for various reasons. Jinx is simply unpopular. Most people agree that its design is subpar, so fans aren't very split. And most of the design's controversy comes from outside the fanbase, which isn't what the video is about. Same with Kadabra, and Porygon's design was never controversial, simply the episode it appeared in. But number one is... Mr. Mime. It would be outright hated if it wasn't for that damn smile. 
It's borderline creepy, yet kinda cute in a, in a mime sort of way. I mean, clowns have always been controversial, and mimes are a bit unsettling. Most fans understand that Pokemon should never look like this, a man in a costume. But Mr. Mime is honestly entertaining in most of its iterations, and we've grown to love it, even though we wouldn't care if it never existed in the first place. Johto has far less controversial Pokemon since, well, there are less Pokemon, but also many of them are safe and unsuspecting, or related to already popular Pokemon, so we only have four. Number four, Pineco. To many, it's literally a pinecone with eyes, a low effort design and concept, while to the informed, it's a bagworm, which should look like it's disguised as a pinecone. Still pretty boring. It's a very unimpressive Pokemon to a lot of fans, but some still come to its defense, even though it doesn't really need it. It has a pretty high defense stat. Number 3. Meganium. Compared to the average Pokemon, it's a fine design, but a lot of fans have high standards when it comes to starter Pokemon, and this one seemingly fails. It's considered less appealing than Bayleaf and relatively boring, although its actual battle prowess is partially to blame. The fact is, it's one of the most unpopular starter evolutions, but as a starter, it still has many fans. Number 2. Miltank. Obviously, Whitney's Miltank has made this Pokemon infamous. Some fans resent Miltank for the battle, and others cherish this memorable challenge, but it doesn't stop at gameplay. Miltank is clearly cute and fun, but there are a bunch of players who simply can't ignore its udders. Some find this character's uh, femininity off-putting. Others find it uh, accurate. But the most controversial Johto design is Sunflora. How controversial can a flower be? Well, that's the problem. Some think it's one of the laziest designs in the franchise. A sunflower with a face. No clever concept or trait whatsoever. While fans on the other end just enjoy the presence of a smiling plant and don't think much of it. There's nothing egregious about it, but nothing phenomenal about it either. Generation 3 has a few controversial designs. Number 5. Absol. Great design in my book, one of the most handsome or beautiful looking Pokemon in the game, majestic and exciting. But there are so many fans that find it too edgy, and even though it was created before the whole edgy OC meme became prominent, these fans can't separate the image of these embarrassing childhood creations and Absol's design. Number 4. Lombre. This is an intriguing guy. You can't help but wonder what's going on in Lombre's head, and admittedly, while being based on the Japanese Kappa, the Mexican stereotypes that were incorporated into its design has left a weird taste in some fans' mouths. Number 3. Gardevoir. We can all agree that this is a well-designed Pokemon and all-around fantastic Pokemon in general, but thanks to Gardevoir's sexualization on the internet, new fans can't separate their initial perception of what they've seen online from what this design actually looks like and conveys. It's a pretty tame looking Pokemon, but many fans can't look it in the eyes knowing what's lurking on the web. Number 2. Combusken. Torchic is cute and Blaziken is badass. While most fans understand that middle stage starters aren't meant to be the coolest, many still find Combusken likable, but some players are disappointed by Torchic's sudden transformation from adorable to fierce, and many others simply don't appreciate how phallic Combusken looks. Very unfortunate shape. And the most controversial Pokemon in Generation 3 is... Cast Form. When you see this face, you think Cast Form is cute. Nothing offensive. Then you look down and you question your eyesight. While a few fans appreciate the design's interpretation of a water molecule and Teru Teru Bozu, others can't help but notice how well endowed Cast Form is. And because many players don't want to use this Pokemon on account of its gimmick, lots of fans never grew to see past this Pokemon's, uh, ample chest. Generation 4 introduced a lot of extreme Pokemon that ended up being controversial in the community. Number 8. Skuntank. I mean, just like skunks in the real world, some may think they're cute while others will do their best to avoid it. In Skunk Tank's case, it isn't even cute, so people simply take it at face value as a skunk tank, or think its design is either bland or straight up ugly. Number 7. Magmortar. I personally think this man is intimidating, interesting, and more cohesive than Magmar, while a ton of fans find it disgusting, creepy, and a downgrade from Magmar's design. One of the few controversial Pokemon I literally can't fathom the hate towards. Number 6. Arceus. To be fair, God is controversial. From the moment Arceus was revealed, fans didn't know what to think of it. Either they were in awe of such a sacred design and entertained by its odd yet terrestrial appearance, or they were completely underwhelmed by God and assumed that the Alpha Pokemon would be way more abstract or imposing. Either way, people eventually warmed up to Arceus. Number 5. Bastiodon. My dude's got a castle for a face. His facade makes total sense, and a lot of fans can look past this dinosaur's exterior and understand its purpose, while others completely reject this shield Pokemon's ugly face and don't care if it's logical. Number 4. Ambipom. 
One of the few designs I agree with the naysayers. To me, Ambipom is kinda freaky looking. Its snub nose, goofy haircut, and unsettling smile is too much for me to handle. But I totally understand how the other side can see this playful Pokemon as fun and interesting, considering how it's got two hand tails. Not a bad concept, just a mishandled design. Number 3. Lopunny. This is one of the few times Game Freak did know what they were doing with this provocative design. This Playboy Bunny either did its job and attracted half of the fanbase, while the other half is not down with the idea of a deliberately sexy Pokemon. It's a good design based on the intentions of Game Freak, but the question is whether or not fans appreciate the intentions. Number 2. Probopass. This design is more debatable. Either it's a clever take on an Easter Island head with the hats and eyes that some Moe heads were depicted with, alongside neat iron shavings that are attracted to its magnetic nose, resembling a mustache. Or this thing is an abomination that shouldn't have existed. Pokemon fans can't seem to agree on Probopass. And finally, it seems like the most controversial Pokemon in Sinnoh is... Rhyperior. Probopass still has tons of defenders, but even though I show my appreciation for Rhyperior, I'm constantly shot down. Some fans like the brutal design, assault vest patterns, and rock cannon arms, while tons of fans point to this dude as an example of the bad evolutions we got in Generation 4, and ironically believe that Rhydon is far more superior than this last minute evolution. What do you think? Gen 5 has the most controversial roster of new Pokemon in the franchise, so much so that all but two of these entries are entire evolution lines or group of Pokemon. But number 10 is... Keep more. While people have opened their hearts to this anteater over the years, perhaps enjoying the aesthetic and his clever association with Durant, many fans still hate every body part of this industrial looking fire type and can't fall in love with its dopey face. Number 9. The Swords of Justice. Verizian is definitely not as controversial as the other two, but regardless, as an entire group, they're either forgotten, despised, loved, or appreciated. Many players find their relatively human-like faces to be hideous, their boot-like hooves to be freaky, and their swords to be crude. But many other fans still see them as majestic, heroic, and colorful legendaries who are wittily translated from the Three Musketeers. Keldeo's fine though. Number 8. The Elemental Monkeys. The Simis as a group are controversial because Simiseer is absolutely hated, Simipore has some fans, and Simisage is seen as an okay Pokemon. So when you put them together, they're incredibly controversial. Over time, these extreme opinions have gotten worse. Either they're objectively the worst Pokemon in existence, or unjustifiably hated. Because at the very least, they aren't lazy designs, just terribly executed. Number 7. Sock and Throw. Unova's answers to Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee fall short of the popularity of those two. At least these two have a cohesive theme and designs, with neat little Oni attributes, but fans will often credit these two as having the most humanoid designs in the franchise and most deplorable use of clothing patterns on a Pokemon. Or you're neutral about them and find their Muppet faces to be amusing. Number 6. The Forces of Nature The Kami Trio was originally despised for looking like straight up men on clouds, and all looking the same. But then their theory and forms were revealed, and they gained a bit of a following, especially in competitive. But from a design aspect, many fans still find their Kami origins to be fairly interesting, and see them as a decent adaptation of Raijin, Fujin, and Inari. Number 5. The Trubbish Line Either you find Trubbish to be cute and Garbodor to be repulsive, or you find Trubbish lazy and Garbodor somewhat well designed, or you love how unique and sad both of them are, or you hate both of them and think they're literal garbage. I mean they are, but one man's trash is another man's treasure. Honestly that's a really good explanation of the controversy. Number 4. The Vanillux Line They're more popular than you think, but still the laughing stock of Unova. Some think Vanillite is cute and fun, but its evolved forms to be lazy. You may find the entire line endearing, and don't take the idea of ice cream shaped Pokemon too seriously, or you're too busy laughing. Double Scoop makes sense as a final evolution, but is that uncreative or entertaining? We'll never know. Number 3. The Clink Clang Line At least Vanillite is somewhat popular, while Clink and the gang garner the same reception, just more extreme than the last. Either you think this is the most bizarre, lazy, and unnecessary family of Pokemon in general, or you literally have no problem with the idea of gear Pokemon and are perhaps amused by the progression from Clink to Clink Clang. Honestly, they're borderline hated by most, so I'm a bit iffy about whether or not they're actually controversial. Number 2. Stunfisk. There are many fans who find this fish stunning, cute, amusing, and logical. It's a flat fish that hides in the mud and zaps those that step on it. That's exactly the design it should have. But others find it forgettable, ugly, and one of the most dispensable Pokemon in the franchise. Would you cry for Stunfisk if it were to disappear? And finally, the most controversial Pokemon in Unova is... The Conkeldur line. 
When I polled you guys on Twitter, this line's results had the most similar distribution between positive and negative reception in Unova. Many fans see them as a mess of a family with disgusting veins, distressing protrusions, clown noses, and confusing held items. But on the other hand, many players are fond of Timber and like using Conkeldur, or at the very least find them more interesting than the Machamp line. Perhaps they find their carny and construction worker origins to be well incorporated into their designs and appreciate their masculinity and uniqueness. Or not. Gen 6 Pokemon are way less controversial, and considering the size of Kalos' new group of Mons, we're starting with... Number 4. Volcanion. This is like the Pokemon with the most mixed opinions. Nobody really hates it, but I don't know anybody who absolutely loves it. Is Volcanion anybody's favorite Pokemon? I'm actually fond of the design, but when you ask around, people usually find it slightly interesting or slightly disjointed. Number 3. Klefki. It's the key Pokemon, <laughs> but I mean, a lot of fans know it's not literally a key, just a little sprite that has evolved to look like a key ring in order to steal keys. This key kleptomaniac is definitely useful in battle, so people have learned to love its cute design, while others still believe Game Freak scraped the bottom of the barrel when designing this Colossian key. Number 2. Barbarical. This ugly barnacle is hated for being ugly. It has eyes on its arms and feet. It is incredibly barbaric, and I'd, I'd understand why some wouldn't want to look at it. But on the other hand, it's a barnacle. Barnacles are not pretty. Many fans take it at face value and understand that it's supposed to be unsettling and perplexing. It's literally one of the most unique Pokemon in the world, and for that reason, half of the world shuns it. Before revealing number one, here's a Pokemon that I thought would be number one, Aromatisse. When I polled you guys on Twitter, it was the single most hated Pokemon you guys voted for, so it isn't controversial. Most people agree it's not a satisfactory Pokemon design, or you guys just know it's my least favorite Pokemon and want it to please me. In the end, the most controversial Pokemon in Kalos is... Delphox. In terms of design, according to many fans, it's a very disappointing final starter evolution. Its proportions are a bit too humanoid, and its ears are, are wild. Many people's least favorite fire starter. Maybe the fact that it's the first explicitly feminine looking starter has to do with its unpopularity. While others don't understand the hate, perhaps they love the starter they chose or enjoy the witch aesthetic. Alola time. You get the gist. Number 5. Primarina. Incineroar was almost here, but it's pretty popular nowadays. Primarina definitely has its fans, it's beautiful and its design makes sense, but it's literally the most feminine starter Pokemon, and people apparently hate when their starters are overly gendered. Number 4. Toucanon, one of the least offensive designs in this video, and that's why it's controversial. Many fans think it looks too much like a literal toucan without any notable features or upgrades, but the other half of fans love how angry this bird is and have witnessed Toucanon in battle and found out the hard way why it's called Toucanon. Its beak lights up like a meter when it uses its moves. It's pretty sick actually. Number 3. Gumshoes. While its design was 100% inspired by detectives, too many people associate gumshoes with Donald Trump, which kinda ruins their perception of this unfortunately designed mongoose. I mean, that's about it. Number 2. Crabominable. Another purposely ugly Pokemon. It's cleverly designed. It's based on the Yeti Crab, so they literally made it look abominable and turned its knuckles into protrusions that would create these Bigfoot footprints as it crawls on the ground. He even looks like a hillbilly who lives up in the mountains. But all of these things make it look uh, not so pretty. So those who literally do not care about its clever design hate its hideous face. But the most controversial Pokemon from Generation 7 are... The Ultra Beasts. So here's the thing. Sun and Moon introduced Pokemon from different dimensions, so understandably, a lot of them look like they evolved on completely different planets and universes. Therefore, most Ultra Beasts look insane. They're purposely over-designed or lack elements most Pokemon have, like faces. Some people love that fact or literally don't care and think Guzzlord is too horrific to love. It's a matter of preference. Finally, Generation 8. There are a lot of crazy designs in Gen 8 that people both hate and love. Number 10. Applin. This worm is in the bottom of the list because people understand the concept of this dragon by now, but when Sword and Shield were released, people thought this Pokemon was a literal apple, so there was a divide between people who thought it was the laziest Pokemon and those who understood the pun. Number 9. The Galarian Fossils Carolus' creations have divided fans for a generation. Are they smart, unique, and a nice reference to historical events? Or is it super uncomfortable using Pokemon who are probably in constant pain? I don't know. Many fans think that Game Freak could have designed better fusions for this concept, while others find the fossils incredibly entertaining. Number 8. Impidimp. 
This wily Pokemon's design successfully expresses the energy this imp contains, but it's one of the few Gen 8 Pokemon that look too western and cartoony for a bunch of fans, while Impidimp also has a big following of those who find him amusing and believe that the entire evolutionary family is well developed. Number 7. Caparaja an example of a Gen 8 Pokemon a lot of artists tried to redesign themselves because they were unsatisfied with its blocky shape and crazy colors, while on the other hand, huge Copperaja fans like me exist who literally don't care about the shape and love the rusted copper on this powerful monster's hide. Many people are either disappointed with or satisfied with our first giant elephant Pokemon. Number 6. Colossal People were anticipating that Roly Coley and Carcol would become some train monster, but it became this generic pile of coal. To some, that's a good thing. It looks like a traditional Pokemon. To others, it's wasted potential and pretty underwhelming. I for one love its Gigantamax form. Number 5. Toxel. One of the few Pokemon I'd agree doesn't really look like a Pokemon. It kinda has the design traits and colors of a Neopet. It looks uncomfortable and out of place in the Pokemon world, especially with how vague its animal attributes are. Either people feel this peculiar feeling, or literally don't know what I'm talking about and see it as a normal Pokemon. Number 4. Calyrex. Most players found it entertaining when they actually witnessed this uh, Pokemon's majesty, but in terms of design, half of fans don't know what they're looking at, and can't fathom why Game Freak would design a legendary like this, while the other half of fans find its bulbous crown to both represent its brain and royalty, while finding the rest of him to be pretty cute. Number 3. Ice Cube. Some fans actually think this Ice Cube is its actual face, others have seen its face and find it very underwhelming, and many fans acknowledge the unique concept and find the execution humorous and enjoyable. Number 2. Greedent. It looks like a western cartoon squirrel, something out of a Disney film or even Family Guy. There's literally nothing wrong with the concept, but either you find it cute and charming or can't look past the unusually cartoony face it has. And finally, the most controversial Pokemon design in this video is Intellion. When I asked you whether or not you liked Intellion, it was the only Pokemon with a relatively close number for positive, neutral, and negative reception. The inspirations for this design are great, and the concept of a secret agent chameleon is timeless, but its proportions and hands alienate pretty much half of all Pokemon fans. It's either too skinny, too humanoid, or too intelligent looking probably the most anthropomorphic personality in Pokemon. Fans of Intellion may even agree with this assessment, but love its personality, abilities, and many hidden details in its design. Clearly something wasn't executed successfully, but it does have the backbone of an amazing Pokemon. Half of Pokemon fans see this potential, while the other half mourn this missed opportunity. But hopefully you saw the potential in this video, so leave a like if you enjoyed, and check out my other videos where I rank aspects of every generation. Subscribe if you haven't, and check the description for the music I used, the t-shirts I made for you guys, the links to my Patreon where you can get cool rewards, which you can also do by clicking the join button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter too. Bye!